Well, thank you, thank you, Axel. Um, lieber Herr Professor Ganten, lieber Axel Pries, uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, it's really an honor and a privilege to be up here talking to you. Indeed, Axel and I uh, share a lot of time during the year, uh, at least on the board of Charité, where I have the honor to also serve. Um, but I've also been a close uh, follower and also active participant in the World Health Summit over the last 10 years at least. Uh, and uh, Detlef, it's, uh, it's not only a privilege to be up here, but it's really amazing what you've created over the last 13 years because what started as a small idea uh, with a big vision today is much more than a small idea, but you truly live up to uh, the name World Health Summit because it has become a true reference uh, every year and a fixture in everybody's calendar, so congratulations for that. <laughs> this past year, the life signs have really emerged as a light in the darkness of the COVID-19 pandemic. Its value to society recognized to a degree rarely seen before, certainly not during my lifetime, or at least uh, working in this industry. We have many reasons to be proud of, and you've heard it, and it's really hard to speak after all these people. Um, I think unprecedented uh, collaboration, transparency, but also taking accountability for health across all different uh, sectors and stakeholders. We've heard about the breathtaking speed of discovery, regulatory approval, also manufacturing and getting vaccines and other highly effective medicines uh, to patients in, uh, in a time we've never seen before. And hopefully, I think this all will serve as a foundation, a foundation to a more sustained uh, partnership to tackle some of the other health crises uh, that uh, we've heard about, uh, because this very disruptive pandemic is still just a small piece of all the remnants of health that we need to tackle. So while we may be celebrating, um, we as global players cannot ignore one simple fact. Not everybody could benefit from the breakthroughs and collaboration that we've seen. And Bill, you, I think you said it very nicely. Um, it feels good for me, like for everyone else in this room, um, to have benefited over the past year from innovation that helped uh, us to be today again in this room in person rather than to be all behind screens, even though I, um, I applaud the fact that you made this a hybrid, uh, a hybrid conference, which I think is going to be most of the conferences in the world, regardless of pandemics anyway. Um, so I am not really interested in the health for a lucky few. I'm interested in health for all. Our successes over these 18 months uh, should embolden us to really focus much more closely on access, innovation, and collaboration to unleash health for all, especially as we enter, on top of everything that's happening, really into a new era of science. A lot of people talk about the biorevolution in this context. So we've heard from Bill a lot about access, so I'm not going to repeat uh, some, of, uh, some of the examples that uh, Bill has rightfully, I think, has given. But um, health for all definitely means patients around the world that get access to medicines at a price that they can afford and making use of partnerships to ensure our efforts are sustainable over the long term. I could give you countless other examples, maybe also outside of Europe where we are today, uh, where it is already difficult enough to get access and equitable access across all countries, because I can guarantee you there's a difference between having access to novel uh, medicines in Berlin uh, than it is in Bucharest or in, in the Ukraine, for example. Um, we also need to focus on what is socially responsible outside of Europe uh, and uh, ensure sustainable action there. Um, we pledged this past year to give an additional 100 million women access to contraception in the world. We've invested 400 million this year into new plants that are dedicated to just produce 
long-acting contraceptives uh, for, uh, for women in low- and middle-income countries. Uh, we had Bill, uh, um, uh, Bill Gates this week in Berlin. I'm sure many of you have met him uh, this week. Uh, together with, um, uh, with him and, and uh, Melinda Gates, uh, we're working very closely on uh, family planning initiatives as, as an exa example for that. Um, one of my preferred uh, projects, uh, and we're a leader in heart health as a company, and we've been invested in this for a long time, and, and I hope uh, one of the anticoagulants that uh, you had to take maybe came from us. So, uh, oh, well, he raises his thumb, so, so glad to, to help you out there, Bill. Um, and uh, today, I must say, for the first time, I didn't feel bad about never having, to, having tried a skateboard. Um, in terms of... Um, of one of the things that, that I feel very strongly about is, is our, um, because it's a nice example, is our Ghana Health Initiative, uh, Heart Initiative, sorry, uh, where we partner with, uh, with the German um, Development Initiative, the GEZ, so the uh, German Institute for Collaboration, um, to improve uh, risk assessment and management of cardiovascular disease on site in public health facilities. Because I think this is exactly, it's not just about donating medicines or giving medicines at a lower price, it's also being on site to, uh, to help put this into practice, uh, which I feel um, is a nice example. We've heard a lot about innovation tonight. Health for All is certainly also embedding innovation into all facets of the life sciences ecosystem, um, making use of the current momentum to tackle issues beyond COVID-19. We've seen the vaccines as the perfect example uh, during this crisis, but innovations in the field of biotech uh, also radically upend uh, our view on many other diseases, especially NCDs. We can now think of curing many of those diseases, not just treating symptoms as we think forward. Um, innovation, and we tend to forget that, especially in the rich countries, is also uh, sustainability at a totally different level, because those that take the leap to drive innovation in a really meaningful way and invest and take the risk to invest in R&D will also uh, attain sustainability by creating job security and creating prosperity for those that take the investment. I think this is really important also for, uh, uh, for these um, latitudes here. And um, for us, therefore, uh, we're really taking that leap, uh, us as a company, buyer, uh, in cell and gene therapy, which to me is one of these examples where really we're going to make a difference, hopefully, uh, moving forward. There are some, uh, ultimately, the, uh, the mRNA vaccines uh, are an example for that uh, cell and gene therapy. I always like to say, if we had surveyed two years ago uh, in the public, would you be willing to take a, a gene, th gene or cell therapy and inject it into your body? we would have probably had a 95% refusal rate. I think uh, this pandemic has also opened many people's eyes to, to innovation in the way that uh, was maybe not possible before. Um, but it's not just the industry that has to innovate. It's uh, across all, uh, all the value chain, starting with uh, academia and university. And again, the World Health Summit, and I can only applaud the initiative, is a perfect example for that because Ditlev, like nobody else, I think you've created a network of university medicine. It started with very few, and today, uh, I think it's somewhere here behind me, you can see the example uh, of, of all those that participate. We need to make sure that the knowledge that's created in our universities, in our academia, is translated. Uh, translated before it goes into shiny paper publications, it's translated ideally into patents and into applications, and that results in new treatments, medicines, devices, but also medical procedures. That's what we need if we want to keep up with, uh, with innovation. Um, for us, um, at Bayer, innovation means uh, collaborating early and closely with those partners um, and making sure no one is left behind. So, for everyone to benefit from breakthrough in science, we require innovation-friendly policy, regulatory and economic frameworks. We've heard about this also in, uh, in Bill's talk, that really understand the urgency of acting now as the ground swell of the biorevolution picks up. Sustainable health innovation 
must be further elevated. There is an opportunity here during Germany's G7 presidency in 2022. Normally, Jens Spahn, I would have uh, uh, di directed this at you. We now need to also talk to the incoming government in Germany about this specific responsibility uh, to put health uh, and innovation and sustainable health firmly on the agenda. Health for all uh, means also recognizing that a global multi-partner effort is required and that collaboration will be key. No industry player can do this alone. No NGO can do this alone. No government can do this alone. We can only do it together. And we've already seen over the past uh, pandemic what can happen when everyone in the healthcare ecosystem is united by a joint purpose. So, what's new this time, I think, is how society at large views the life sciences and our collaborations. We gave people around the world new hope. We inspired new generations of innovators. I can imagine that many young people that graduate now from high school and that decide for college education, they want to go into science again because they see what science can move and how important science is in our lives. We inspired our community to think more boldly. Collaboration will be key for achieving health for all. In my vision, I see a joint effort of government working hand in hand with science organizations, industry and civil society. And I can say as an example, because uh, Minister Spahn and I, I think uh, we've talked uh, quite, quite often over the last two years, uh, he will say not uh, more often than he would have liked probably. Um, but uh, it's been that type of collaboration that I, would, um, that I would hope for to preserve as we move forward. We're at the beginning of a marvelous era in science, and we should be emboldened, as I said before, to make health for all possible through access, innovation, and collaboration. Thank you for your attention.